Hello, this is Eli Encrop presenting demo number three, where we will look at the FastGraphs forecasting tools and review how to interpret and utilize them properly. There are two primary FastGraphs forecasting tools. The first is the Estimated Earnings and Return Calculator, which we call the Forecasting Graph. And the second is the 10-Year Earnings Yield Estimator. When initially drawn, both of these tools default to the consensus estimates of leading analysts reporting to Standard & Poor's Capital IQ. All the subscriber has to do is type in the stock symbol and hit the go button and fast graphs will automatically be drawn. It's important that the fast graph subscriber understands that these are estimated earnings and return calculators and tools that are simply doing calculations based on these est analyst estimates. As you will see a little later in the demo, there is an override function where the subscriber can add their own estimates if they disagree with the consensus estimates. The estimated earnings and return calculator is simply that. It's a calculator. It defaults, as we previously mentioned, to the consensus of leading analysts reporting to Standard & Poor's Capital IQ. There are two forms of forecasts that are displayed in the Estimated Earnings and Return Calculator. First, precise earnings estimate numbers are given for up to four fiscal years. For instance, when looking at McDonald's, you can see that the next four years of forecasted data include 586, 633, 692, and 768. You will also notice that the growth rate for each year is displayed underneath the EPS estimates. After the given earnings estimates, which can include up to four years of data, FastGraph uses the consensus long-term estimated growth rate that analysts provide. Here we can see that analysts are projecting an 8% growth rate for McDonald's. Consequently, the 2018 and 19 EPS estimates utilize this 8% growth rate. Our second example, Aaron's, gives a little more clarity to what we've just pointed out. This year's consensus estimated earnings are 187, representing a 13% growth rate over 2013's actual 165. Then there is a consensus forecast of $2.02 for the next year, which represents an 8% growth rate for, from the $1.87, followed by estimates of 236 and 259 for 2016 and 2017. After the 2017 estimate, the EPS estimates are grown by the long-term growth rate of 8.5% which is rounded to 9%. Logic would tell us that the closer the estimate is to the actual time frame, the more precise it might be. So, when you are looking at these estimates, we tend to suggest that the subscriber focus more on the first two years, the current year in which we are in and the next year's estimate, and less on going out three to five years. However, we do believe that all of these numbers collectively provide a reasonable proxy for what you might expect from a given company in terms of its future growth, not just because it's based on consensus analysts, but also because a significant portion of this number can be provided by guidance from the company themselves. When interpreting how to use this graph, there is a couple little tricks and tips that we want to point out. First of all, we want you to notice that since this is an estimate, we believe that it will be reasonable and rational, but we could never expect it to be perfect. Therefore, FastGraphs automatically creates what we call a value corridor. We supply two orange lines above and two orange lines below the consensus estimate line. So the idea is the subscriber would realize that these numbers represent hopefully rational expectations, but they shouldn't be thought of absolutely precise. Anytime the stock price is within these orange corridors, it would theoretically be at a reasonable value. Of course, if it's within the two above, as it is with Aaron's, you can argue that it's moderately fully valued to even slightly overvalued. And of course, if you saw the price at these two bottom orange lines, you can argue that the stock was significantly undervalued. All of that, of course, based on what the consensus estimates for this year, next year, and then the three to five year period following that actually are. But the point is we are trying to provide a range of reasonableness here. Then the additional blue lines just provide different PE ratios, and you can look at the scale to the right of the forecasting chart and see what these lines represent. For example, the bottom line in this example represent 7.5 times earnings. The top line would represent 22.5 times earnings. So what we are saying is that if the price to earnings ratio expanded from its current 17.8 PE to a 22.5 multiple, then the stock would be closer to $42, and you can do that by just pointing at any of these dots throughout the graph. So if you go to the final dot here, what we are simply saying is that if the stock traded at 15 times earnings, then the target price would be $45.74, assuming that earnings came in exactly as this chart was drawn, and that would represent a 7.8% compounded annual return, which would include dividends, if any. For clarity, let's look at a company that has a slightly higher dividend yield. 
Steering Company. This is an interesting example because I want you to notice that the consensus is forecasting a 10% drop, earnings going from 935 to 843 over the last completed fiscal year. And also notice that the diamonds indicate that Deere has a October 31st fiscal year. Moreover, earnings are expected to drop again in the following year by roughly 8% before reaching a stable level of, level of earnings. You can also see that Deere has a moderate to average expected long-term growth rate of 6%. Yet because the price is below the orange line and the company pays a dividend, the estimated return is greater than the estimated earnings growth rate. This particular graph is forecasting that if you went out here to 1231 of 2019, your price would represent $134.48. That target price would represent a 9.8% compounded rate of return that also included dividend income. Let's now move on to the original McDonald's example we used and look at the 10-year earnings yield estimate, or what we like to call the I chart, earnings yield estimator chart. This chart is a mathematical representation of the picture of the estimate, earnings, and return calculator, and since McDonald's has a calendar fiscal year, this will make it a little easier to present here. McDonald's has a target estimated annual total return of 9.1%, which indicates that if McDonald's grew earnings as expected, its target price on 12-31-2019 would be $134.37, 15 times the estimated 2019 EPS number. When we examine the I table, we see that number expressed in the brown box here. In order to state this a little more clearly, we want to point out that the value you see by hitting this diamond on the ends here, in this case 12-31-2019, is a price of 134.37. This is the same value that you see on the cell down here on the I chart, 134.37. And what this says is that if the stock trades at this valuation, assuming all these earnings estimates come to fruition, then you would average a 9.1% compounded annual rate of return. If we look at the individual years, the earnings yield estimate table simply demonstrates the math behind the estimated earnings and return calculator. In this example, McDonald's is expected to grow earnings by 7% to reach 2014 EPS of $5.86. If the stock were to trade at 15 times earnings, this would represent an $87.84 price target at the year end in comparison to its current price of $95.02. This would represent a negative 5% compound annualized rate of return. Note, however, that this is only out looking out for the next nine months and is defaulting to a 15 PE ratio. In the following year, McDonald's is expected to grow earnings by 8% to $6.33, which would put the value at $94.88 which again, you can see in this cell, or you can see on the estimated earnings and return calculator on this point right here. Then so on and so forth as you go up the scale and hit these different diamonds here and get these different pop-up windows, you would see that the numbers correspond to what you see in the I chart below. $103.73 in 2016 plus dividends would represent a 6.7% annual compound return, assuming all these estimates were correct and the numbers came out precisely as they were forecast. Now another point that's very important that I mentioned earlier in the demo video, you also have the ability to override the estimates. For example, if you thought an 8% growth rate was too aggressive and that McDonald's was only going to grow at say 5%, you could type in the number 5 on the left hand side here to override the growth rate estimate. You can redraw the McDonald's chart by hitting the go button at the top or at the bottom of the navigation bar. Now you've redrawn the chart with your own theoretical earnings growth rate. You still have the same estimates for the first four years, but from this point forward, notice that you're only growing earnings by 5% a year. And of course, that changes all of your factors and allows you to say, what if it only grew at 5%? Then my target rate of return would be lower at 5% growth than it would be at 8% growth and vice versa. You could put 15% growth if you thought the numbers were overly conservative. Additionally, you have the ability to override specific years in the same place as you override overrode the growth rate estimate. We also provide a link to other estimates that enables you to compare our estimates to other sources. This can be viewed by clicking the link to find other estimates or symbols. We have just a few other comments about the earnings yield estimate table, remembering that it's just the mathematics behind the estimated earnings return calculator. It takes this picture and simply converts it into numbers. The first cell shows how many shares you would have bought by investing $10,000 of the current price. The first green column shows the estimated earnings per share for each year. These are the same numbers that can be observed underneath the estimated earnings and return calculator. Expected dividends per share are shown in the second column. The third column represents the expected total earnings claim. 
Again, using the starting number of shares as a multiplier, these values are simply the expected EPS multiplied by beginning shares. At the bottom of this column, it totals the cumulative earnings over a 10-year period. The fourth column shows an earnings yield above a treasury bond obviously would indicate that you've at least got some compensation for the risk you're taking. Then you have your current dividend yield, and this is growth yield. Some people refer to this as yield on cost. The total dividends are displayed in the sixth column, which are based on the beginning number of shares you would have bought with $10,000, just like the total earnings column. The total dividends are accumulated at the bottom of this column as well. We have already discussed the seventh column, target price and estimated total return. Finally, the last two columns show the current 10-year treasury rate and expected payouts, once again totaled at the bottom. This number can then be compared to both the cumulative earnings and total dividends. For instance, the total expected earnings is expected to give you a 3.6 to 1 ratio to the treasury bond in this example. In other words, if McDonald's hits all these estimated targets, the company would generate 3.6 times as much earnings as you would get in cumulative treasury bond interest. Now I've put a picture of United Technologies. I chose this example because I wanted you to see another aspect of the earnings yield chart. We show this company pays a dividend, but when the column is pink, like it is here, this is indicating that it takes this many years, or it won't be until the year 2019, where the total dividends would equal what you're getting in riskless treasury bond interest. And you can get the same concept with yield and estimated dividends displayed in pink. So when you see the lines pink like this, this is simply saying that in the beginning your dividend yield is less than the yield in the treasury bond, and the cumulative dividends would not equal what you would receive on the treasury bond until year-end 2019. However, it's important to note that the dividends would be exceeding a treasury bond entrance probably by 2017, when the yield was expected to be 2.8% versus the treasury 2.6%. The different colored codes here give you an indication of how long it's going to take you to come into parity with the 10-year treasury bond. So that's the forecasting chart, or the estimated earnings and return calculator in a picture and numbers. It's a design to help you make decisions. Remember, you can always run overrides and run your own calculations or as many what-if scenarios as you would like. But the idea is to try to give you a sense of relative valuation along with how analysts are presently viewing the company. This is the third video in a series of demos that illustrate the enormous power and benefits of the FastGraphs research tool. The next demonstration videos will cover the basics of how to use the screening function and how to build and manage a portfolio using FastGraphs.